Now in the math 105 curriculum, we skip section 6 of chapter 8, which deals with quadratic functions and their graphs. So here we have this form. Here we have this form and this form. Now this is one that we'll be working on in our next section, section 7, and that's the last part of chapter 8 that we do. So some terms that we'll be using, the axis of symmetry, we're going to go over that in the next topic, a parabola. Translated we don't use particularly, but we do use the word vertex. So we'll go on now to topic 7, keeping this as something in mind and we'll be go going over some of this in some detail. We're still in topic 6 and actually they're going over this here, which is what we're going to be doing in our next chapter. This particular formula here is called the vertex formula. And this letter A right there, if A is positive, as it is, well, we don't know, but whatever A stands for, if it stands for a positive integer, you're going to have a parabola that looks like this. Now the axis of symmetry, this one right here, is this point right there. Oh, that's an old one there. Let me go back to where we are. This is the axis of symmetry right there. It's the x value. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. This low point of the parabola is the minimum point, and that minimum point is given as our y value, which is negative 2. Now up here, our y value is k, and our x value, which is the axis of symmetry, is the in this case, it's going to be a negative 1. Okay, so let's go on a little bit here, because there's some good stuff here. All right, now here's a parabola that opens downward. This vertex is 3. And the axis of symmetry, right there, is 2. And you'll see how it works in the formula in the next section. Now, since this is the highest point, this is the maximum. So when A in that formula we showed is negative, you're going to have a parabola that opens downward and the vertex will be the maximum. Okay, and then they want you to graph, but we're skipping all of that. So lots of practice, but the semester is only so long, so there's only so much we can do. Okay, here we are. More about graphing quadratic functions. Now here we're going to go through a process which is called finding the vertex and also finding the intercepts. So let me give you some background on intercepts. We did show in the previous uh, section what the vertex was. Remember if the letter A here is negative the vertex will be the maximum. If A is positive, the vertex will be the minimum. And then I'm going to go over these two terms right now.
So as we look at this, I tried to be a little fancy if I could. Made some nice straight lines and tries to use a little circle here for my parabola. Remember this goes off to infinity in that direction, both in the x direction to negative infinity, positive infinity, and then up this way to positive y infinity, but coming from there. So what are our x-intercepts? And notice we have two. We have this one, and this might be like a negative 3, 0, and this one might be a 2, comma 0. These are x-intercepts, and this is the form from chapter 2 for x-intercepts. And this is our y-intercept. Now, notice you get an x-intercept when the y is 0. You get a y-intercept when the x is 0. So we're going to see that in these formulas right here. So let's take a look at them. So here they're giving us this special function formula for the vertex. This is what we're going to be working on in a few moments. Now they're saying the value of k, which is actually our y term out here, if a is positive, if a is positive, our parabola is going to go upwards. So the value of y, which is right there, which is this k, which is our y value, I'll go over that a little later too, that's our minimum. So this, when a is positive, this k will be the minimum. And this negative h, or the value for that h, will be actually our axis of symmetry, which we spoke of earlier too. Now here, if the function, same function, vertex function, it will have a maximum if the value of k if a, which is this a, is negative, because that's going to be a, a parabola that opens downward. So if you have a parabola that opens downward, it's when a is negative, then this vertex is the maximum value, which is our k out here, which again is a y value. Now for any function, the y-intercept, that is where it's going to cross the y-axis when f of 0, which is f of x, and x is 0, remember x is 0, then whatever value you have for the y, this is your y-intercept. That goes way back to chapter 2. And Okay, that's your x-intercept. Let's see if I have that right. If y is 0, yes, I had, think I had that reversed. If y is 0, because this is what, remember, this is y here. It says y equals 0. If y equals 0, then whatever we have for an x value, that will be our x-intercept. And let's try some examples, and we'll get back to this a little later as well. Now I have a whiteboard lecture on this where I go over what they want. We want to put this formula that's sort of in standard form into the vertex form. And there is a protocol for it, and it goes like this. You write x squared plus 8x, 
and you take the negative 5 and separate it a little bit, put it out here. So we've just written that expression, but separate. Remember, this is the C term that we've moved out here. Now, what they want us to do here is to complete the square of this expression so that we get it into this form. Now, we did this in the early part of chapter 8. We take half of the B term. Well, the X just goes like that. Half of the B term, which is 8, is 4. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to square the 4 to get our new C term that makes this trinomial now a perfect square trinomial. But uh, something we do here is we've added 16 here. I'm now going to subtract 16. So notice if we combine these two things, that's 0. So we still have our original expression. But I've added 16 to complete the square that will be factored into this form. We factor this perfect square trinomial into this. Now we add these two together. And we now have this in this form up here. Now a is there in the form of a 1. We just don't write it. OK, now let's take a look at this one. They're going to get a little more challenging, but the process is the same. x squared minus 3x. I'm going to leave a space for my c term there, but I'm going to put my plus 2 out there. So this and this are exactly the same. Now, I'm going to put a parenthesis as I complete the square. My x goes there. I'm going to divide this by 2. So this then becomes 3 halves. I'm now going to square this. This now becomes a plus 9 fourths. But to keep this expression the same, I'm going to subtract 9 fourths. But I've now completed the square so I can factor it into this form. Now I just have to combine these two here. This, by the way, uh, in order to add, I have to convert this to 8 fourths. And this now becomes a negative 1 fourth. And I now have it in this form up here. All right, let's do this one. Now, I don't want to have a negative x there. So what I'm going to do is in my first two terms here, I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So I now get x squared plus 5 x. And I'm moving this plus 6 out here, because I'm not factoring anything out of that. OK, so this is the same as that so far. So I'm going to put a parenthesis here which I bring down my x. Remember, there's a negative 1 out there. And I'm going to take half of 5, which becomes 5 halves. Now I have to complete the square by squaring this. And I get a positive 25 fourths. But out here, I have to put a negative 
25 fourths. But I have to remember I have this negative 1 that I have to bring over here as well. Now, notice what I have here. I have a negative 1 times a negative 25 fourths. So this is going to become a positive. And I have to put this into fourths as well. So this becomes 24 fourths, which I now add. And I get 49 fourths. And I have put this into our form right here. Now, before we leave this slide, uh, they didn't ask us to do this here, but they will be asking us later to do this. Well, what is the minimum of this vertex formula? Well, this is our x value, but it's the opposite sign x value, which will be a negative 4. And this is our y value, a negative 21. So if we go negative 4, negative 21, this will be our minimum right here. And the parabola is going to open up because our a term is positive. Now, what is the vertex of symmetry? Well, the vertex of symmetry is going to be going right through 4. And again, k is our minimum or maximum, depending on whether a is positive or negative. If a is negative, it opens downward, because here a is negative. And this would be our maximum point. And for this one, this is our vertex. Again, it's opposite sign. And this is our y value. So it's right about there. It opens upward. This is our minimum. OK, so lots of stuff going on here. And we don't have the previous section to build on. So I'm trying to tie some of that information in so you have a better handle on this material. Now in number 8, uh, you're going to do a similar thing. In fact, let me do that one for you. So here we're going to factor out a negative 2. I get this. I'm going to put my parentheses, bring my x down, a negative half of that. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. Square this, I get a positive 1 16th. But I'm going to have to add a negative 1 16th. Bring out my negative 2. These then become a positive. 2 over 16th is 1 eighth. Convert this into eighths, multiplying the top and bottom by 8. I get 32 eighths, do my subtraction, and there is my vertex formula. So this is going to open up downward. And my maximum, then, will be opposite sign, 1 fourth, and a negative 31 eighths. Now my axis of symmetry is right there. And my, in this case, maximum is right there. Now if I were to sketch that, I'm going to get something that looks like something like that. So this parabola never reaches the x-axis. So these are not real numbers. These are complex numbers. Because if you were to solve this, put a 0 there and solve that using the quadratic equation, 
you would get that they are imaginary numbers. Again, that's something we covered a little bit earlier. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, I'd like to do this live, but it took me five minutes to do this, so I don't want to run the tape that long. So here's our equation. And what I'm doing is I'm putting these two down, bringing the three over, and I'm going to find out what I can get in my C term as we complete the square. Well, x goes there, the plus goes there, half of 2 is 1. I square 1, I get 1, but I also have to put the negative 1 there. So notice this equation is the same as this, it's just in that vertex form. So what does this tell us? Well, the opposite sign of this, which we said was h, that's our negative 1. And then our k, which we said was y, is 2. So this is our vertex. Now if we plot that vertex on the graph, it's right there. Now, we said that this is our axis of symmetry, which is a line going right down there. And we said that this y value, which is k, is our minimum. Now, how do we know it's a minimum? Because out here, we know our a is 1. And I've put some other points there, and I'm going to now attempt to sketch the graph. And that is my parabola. Now notice, is this a real solution? No, because it does not cross the x-axis. These are going to be imaginary solutions. Okay? And once again, our minimum is 2. Why? Because our A is positive. Now in the whiteboard lecture, I didn't do all of these. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep it a little bit short. We're running long here. So once again, I put my x squared minus 4, parentheses, take the x there, the negative, half of that, square that, I get this, but put in my minus 4 there along with my 1 that I brought out. So this gives me that. So opposite sign is 2, and my y is negative 5. So this is my vertex. Now, since A is a 1, I have a parabola open, opening upwards. I just got three points. And if you have a graphing calculator, by the way, it makes this really easy. And you just put that in your graphing calculator. And then your axis of symmetry is right there. Your x value, that's your axis of symmetry. And your minimum, since this A is positive, will be a negative 5, right there. These are just tedious. You have to divide out of 2 and do what we've done to get the vertex and the axis of symmetry and then graph it. Now this one, you notice your A is going to be a negative 1 here. So this parabola will open downwards. Now keep in mind, in the back of your booklet, we give you the answers for all of these. We just don't show you how to get there, but we've done that in a number of examples already. Now for this one, they want us to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. This is going to be a parabola 
that's going to cross the x-axis, let's say there, and there, and the y-axis there. I'm just making this up to show you what they're looking for. So what would be our strategy? Well, it sort of would be like finding the zeros. So I'm going to use completing the square, which is a good technique here. We've been practicing that. So remember, we bring this over to the other side as a positive 1. This is going to be x plus 3, the quantity squared. And we have to find our c term. Brought that one over. And we're going to square that. So that's going to be a 9 that we add to this side and a 9 to that side. So we just take the square root of this. This is going to be plus or minus the square root of 10. And we bring our 3 over. And we have our two answers now. x equals, and if I put this in a t-chart, maybe that'll help. So when y is 0 and we have two values, remember here y is 0 for our x-intercepts, this is going to be a negative 3, the square root of, let's put that properly, there we go. So negative 3, negative square root of 10 is probably this one. And negative 3 plus the square root of 10, this is a little bit more than a 3, 3 point something, so it's going to be over there. So it looks like that. Now, we have to find our y-intercept. Well, when x is 0, this is going to be our y-intercept right here. So if x is 0, this will be a 0, this will be a 0, this is going to be a negative 1. So our y-intercept right there is 0, negative 1. Now I had that sort of accurate because I already did it. And this one uh, works in a similar way. Uh, again, we're running up to 27 minutes. Hopefully you have some good techniques down. And I have yet to work on either whiteboard exercises or these for chapter 9. But hopefully I'll have some time that I can get to them. But you'll be doing some uh, items of chapter 9 in Math 105.